Alright everyone, it's time for the last part of my video. Hopefully I can fit it all in. So we've created the body, we've created the morpher, we've exported the, the NIF file at the lowest weight and the highest weight. And now is the final step. And the final step is going to take place in NIF scope. So basically the reason we need to use NIF scope here at the end of the process is because when we export the NIF files out of Autodesk 3D's Max, some of the properties get messed up. Or maybe they don't get messed up and we just need to fix them. I'm not completely sure. But this is the process that we're going to go through. We're going to open up the files in NIF scope and we're going to alter a few of the properties so we can use them in Skyrim. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to open up three different instances of NIF scope. So the first instance, I'm going to open it up now. What we're going to load in the very first one is the base body, the, the zero body. That's what I'm going to load first. So I use Cherry Hodling's body, so I'm going to find that folder. Here it is. There we go. And for some reason, I don't know if this is just me or if this happens to other people as well, but when I load the body into NIF scope, for some reason Astrid's burnt body texture comes up. I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that. It's always been like that for me, but it's never messed anything up or affected me. So if the same thing happens to you, don't worry about it. Alright, so that's what we're going to load up in the very first NIF scope box. Now we're going to open up another. And in this NIF scope, we're going to upload the original armor that we started with. Not the one we tampered with, but the very original one. So. I'm going to go digging into my computer where I put all the base files, meshes, armor, and I did the uh, Stormcloak Officer, so alpha female, and I'm going to load that one. There we go. And I use the Morpher, so I use the zero armor for both the lowest body weight and the highest body weight for the highest body weight I just manipulated the armor so I can just keep this one the whole time if you did a process different from mine where you ended up using the highest weight armor as well then you should load it appropriately when you get to that step but for now I'm just gonna load the zero outfit and for the third box I'm going to load the new armor but just the zero one not the not the full body weight but the lowest body weight where did I put it? I put it in here. There we go. I want to load the zero file. Okay. So I'm going to load the zero file here, and there we have it. That is the armor that I changed in 3D's Max. Now I'm going to run through this process here, and it's not a whole lot of actual skill. It's a whole lot of memorization, and it's extremely tedious. You go through a lot of copying and pasting, and if you make one small mistake, if you go into autopilot and just kind of days out for a minute while copying and pasting, and you accidentally copy the wrong thing to the wrong spot, then everything gets messed up. So all I can say is just try to pay attention when you do this process, and if you go into the game and something's off, it's probably because you accidentally forgot to do something or you copied wrong. So, here's our file, the one we want to fix right here. It has some properties that we need to fix. So, I'm going to go over here and we have this zero knee node. I'm going to open that up. And then all these nodes come up and they're all pointing to bones, but we're not going to worry about those. What we really care about is these tri shapes right here. One tri shape I have is set to the clothing and the other one I have is set to the body. Now for the first step, I'm going to worry about the body first. And for those of you out there who are just trying to manipulate a body and not worry about any armor at the moment, this is the part you need to pay attention to. I'm going to open up this body, and right here I have this, um, basically the Morpher controller. You might not have one depending on how you created your body, but this is what I used. So this Morpher right here, you need to right click that, go down to block, and just click on remove branch. So I'm just going to do that, 
the morpher disappears and everything's gravy. You don't want the morpher on the file. Alright, that's pretty straightforward. Now the next thing we need to do is this lighting shader property. Now this is the main thing that gets messed up when you uh, export NIF files out of 3ds Max. So the thing is, this NIF or this uh, lighting property is messed up because I exported it out of 3ds Max, but the lighting property on the original armor isn't messed up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to copy and paste the lighting property from the original armor that works perfectly fine in the game and copy it over to the new one we have. So I'm going to go over here to my original one. I'm going to right click on this old shader property, go to block, and just click remove branch. By the way, we're gonna, you're never going to use remove or copy. It's always going to be copy branch or remove branch. Those are the only two you want to use. So I'm going to click on remove branch. And when I do that, the property is gone now, so the skin turns white because it's missing something, obviously. So now what we're going to do is go to the original body that we used to morph right here. And I'm going to copy the shading property for the body. Now notice how I didn't copy the shading property from the body that the original armor is using. Because this body right here, that's the vanilla body in Skyrim. I don't want the shading prop I don't want the shader property from the original vanilla Skyrim body on my new body. I want the I want the lighting property from the body that I know works in the game. So I'm gonna copy from here. I'm gonna click on block and copy branch. And I'm gonna go over to this body and I'm going to click on we need try shape data right here and I'm gonna right click, go down to block and then paste branch. And now when that happens, the skin turns um, smooth, but then the lighting property goes all the way down here. And so we need to make one last correction. You need to go up to the tri shape data right here, and you need to scroll, no, oh. there we go, yes. You need to click on the tri shape data right here, the one that's lined up with the body. You need to scroll down the very bottom where it says properties. Now when you click this arrow right here, you notice that there's two empty boxes right here. So I'm going to double click on this and what I'm going to type in now is all based on this number right here. Now depending on what armor you use or what, what basically this number, what I'm saying is this number is going to change almost every time you do this process and that's okay. You just want to click on the property right here and send it back up by clicking in the number that matches up with that. Whatever it is, just type it in, then hit enter. And now, after I've done that, the skin looks okay again. I mean, it still looks like Astrid's bird skin, which isn't technically okay, but that's what's supposed to happen. It's back to what it originally looked like, and it has the new shader properties that came from a body that I know works in the game. So now, after I've done that, I technically don't need to keep this window up anymore, because all I needed was the, the shading property from the body. So I'm just going to X that out. So now all I have left here is the original armor with the vanilla body and my new armor with my new body. So now that we've copied the properties from the body, I'm going to take care of the properties from the armor. Now, in this particular case, I only have to copy the shader property looks like. Everything else looks alright. but depending on what armor you work on, some of them will have something called an alpha property. And when you see that alpha property, you go through the exact same process that you do with the lighting property. You delete the, you remove the branch of the alpha property, you go back to the original armor and you copy that alpha property, and then you copy paste the new alpha property and do the same thing with, uh, you do the same thing with clicking on the properties down here, and you line up the alpha property based on its number. It's the exact same process with the lighting shader property. This particular armor doesn't have an alpha property, that's okay, but if you do do this process and you have an alpha property, just follow the exact same steps that you do with the lighting shader property. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and do the lighting property for the armor. I'm going to remove that branch and the armor turns pale. I'm going to go to the 
just the just the armor is what I want. You see this? Uh, you see this female underwear body? I don't care about that. That's the vanilla body. I don't want anything to do with it. I just care about the armor. And there's no alpha property on the original one, so all I care about is the lighting shader property. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna go over here and just paste it. Oop. Paste branch, and it'll go down to the bottom. And then you go back up to the tri shape data. Click on the properties, and the exact same thing. It's 37 again. So click on 30, click 37 in there, and it goes right to that. All right. And you notice how this number changed now, because it was 37 earlier, but now it's 35. That's all right. The numbers will change around. Don't worry about that. So now that is pretty much the main process that you need to do here in NIFScope. It's mainly the lighting shader properties and the alpha properties. So for the most part, that's, that's mainly it, but there's a couple of other things we need to tweak just in case. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the armor. I'm going to look at the tri shape data for the armor. Now, let's see here. I'm going to click on the tri shape data that's in the lower category here. And I'm, I'm looking right here where it says the number of vertices. It has 1552 vertices. I need to make sure this number matches the original armor. So I'm going to click back to the original armor over here. Here's the armor right here. I'm going to go to the tri shape data and it does have 1552. If you ever export something out of 3ds Max and the number of vertices doesn't match the original, you either forgot to put a smooth modifier on it, or you use the edit poly modifier instead of the edit mesh modifier when they weren't calculating the same amount of vertices. And I, I went over that in one of my earlier videos, so just make sure when you're using the edit modifiers that you only use edit poly if it picks up the same amount of vertices as the edit mesh does. All right? So that's the first thing you need to do. Make sure, and if there were more pieces of armor, you would need to check them all and make sure all the vertices numbers match up. If, if they don't match up, then you need to go back and double check what you did in, this, in uh, 3D's Max. And it's possible you might have even accidentally hit a button that adds a vertice into the, into the scene and, and you didn't realize it. That's happened to me. It sucks. And you might end up having to start all over, but the numbers need to match up. Right, so that's the first thing you need to check. And actually, you, you should probably check that first before you go through this whole process and realize that your armor's messed up. So, probably should do that first. And now, um, the next thing you need to check in this data here. Alright, so it has vertices, yes. And now it has vertex colors. Now, in, in most of my cases with creating, with meshing the armor, this hasn't really affected anything when I've turned it on. But there have been a few cases where if I left it as no, my armor would be invisible in the game. So I'm going to say, go ahead and always have this on. It's kind of like the smooth modifier situation. Some people say don't bother with it, but the fact of the matter is if you use it, it probably won't cause any harm. In fact, it's only likely to do good. If you go into the game and your armor is invisible, it's likely because you accidentally forgot to turn this on. So I, I would say do it, and if you go into the game, and something's weird, you could try turning it off and then recopying, re-exporting the NIF file, see if that fixes it. But I would just say go for it. And let's see. There's one other thing. What was it? Hmm. If I can find it. I've actually been away from creating armor for a while because I've been so busy with real life stuff. Oh, here we go. So the body part list. So if you go to the clothing and you go to the dismember skin instance, and you look down here at partitions, it should say 32 down here. What the 32 represents is the torso. And for the most part, when you work with the vanilla armors, this will usually be perfectly fine the way it is. But if you maybe take some armor that um, someone else has already worked on and you're going to change it, um, for some reason this this might it might not say 32. It might be off somehow. So, it's worth checking, just for the heck of it. Just make sure that says 32 and represents the torso, if it is, in fact, a torso piece of armor. The gloves will have a different number. I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head what number it is, but you should see something like there. Some number will represent it, all right? And for the most part, that is the process in NIFScope. 
So now that I've created, I've uh, fixed the properties of the lowest body weight, I'm going to do File, and then Save As. And now what I'm going to do, I'll save it in the same place, but um, I'll save it as called something else. I'll save it as uh, NS, NIF Scoped, Storm Cloak Officer 0. And I'll save it right there. Now that's pretty much the process. So the next step is going to be doing the exact same process with the highest weight body armor. And if I load that up now, yep, there's my highest weight armor. The chest area is pretty raggedy. I could have put more time and effort into that, but I'm just making this to show you the process so I didn't try too hard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and do this process. I'm going to follow the exact same steps I just did with the lowest body, and then after I do that, we're going to go into the game and pray that the process worked. Okay, so I've finished um, altering the NIF files for both the lowest and highest body weight. I've renamed the files and put them into my default Skyrim folder, and now I'm going to go into the game and check them out. Alright, so I already have the armor equipped on my character, and it looks a little bit off. That's because I pretty much whizzed right through the skin wrapping and the altering with the mesh. So it looks really sloppy and kind of weird. Of course, when you do it to your armor, you will make sure it looks very nice and neat. Let's see. So I'm at the lowest weight right now. Yeah, see, it, it fixes when it gets to the highest weight. But, so there's, yeah, the armor does get altered a little bit, that's be just because I was really reckless with, uh, with the mesh altering during the skin wrap and everything. I could, of course, go back and try really hard, but this is generally the process. That's all I really wanted to show you. So, for the most part, it's there. I could go back and brush it up, and you can too if you need to, depending on whatever armor you do. But for the most part... That is how you do it. At least that's the process I use. I'm sure everyone out there has their own way, and there, I'm sure there's probably some processes out there that are better than mine, and if there are, I'd like to know them. But for now, I realized there wasn't a whole lot of video, uh, video relay as far as how to do this stuff, and I learned it myself just by asking around and bugging the crap out of people that did it. And this is... This is a... Uh, pretty much my effort to help people who really have no idea where to get started and hopefully with this video um, you can be encouraged to try it out yourself and maybe even make your own body type and make some armor for it and put it out there for other people to try out themselves. But that's pretty much all there is to it. That's all I have to say. So thank you for watching and let me get out of Skyrim here. So thank you for watching, and hopefully, if you are going to be a modder, you have a, a bit more of a, a good place to place your first foot to get started, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.